Denmark has a warlike past. Its Viking warriors ruled the Baltic and North Seas, ravaging distant nations with the horrors of war. By 1940, however, Denmark was very different. The country had become a peaceful nation, and the army was only a shadow of its glorious past. As Central Europe mobilized to face the threat of Nazi Germany, the Danes preferred to remain neutral in the conflict, going about their usual daily lives. But little Denmark, despite its neutrality, was a bottleneck in the German expansion plans. Therefore, on April 9, 1940, the Germans initiated Operation Weserubung, whose aim was to conquer Denmark and Norway. This video is a collaboration presenting the game Gerda, A Flame in Winter, published by Don't Nod and developed by Portaplay. During the German occupation of Denmark in World War II, an unlikely heroine emerges. Her name is Gerda, a nurse in a small Danish town. In this highly immersive RPG light, inspired by real events from the most harrowing period of the German occupation of Denmark, the game is told from the point of view of Gerda, a civilian who will face the dangers of the Gestapo. Using her guile and knowledge, she will have to make difficult decisions that may not always have the best of outcomes as she fights to save her loved ones. It is a narrative filled with dilemmas where difficult choices have consequences. Each interaction can lead the course of your story down a different path. Therefore, the game can be replayed multiple times since, depending on the choices, the unfolding of the story will be different. Gerda, A Flame in Winter is available now for PC and Nintendo Switch on the store's Steam and Nintendo. Check out more about the game at Don't Nod website. Defend your country and your family and friends in Gerda, A Flame in Winter. On the day of the invasion of Denmark, German ambassador contacted the Danish government. He said that the German army would invade the country and that the Danish forces were not to resist as the Germans would enter the territory to protect the neighboring country against a British invasion. But before he received an answer from the Danes, German troops were already moving inside Denmark. The Germans were invading by land and sea with amphibious and aerial landings using paratroopers. The Danish army was very thin. There were only 30,000 soldiers and their equipment was mostly old fashioned. But despite this great disadvantage, they rapidly did their duty. An order was given to conquer the royal palace and to capture King Christian X with the aim of forcing the Danish surrender. But the resistance of the few but brave Danish fighters made it possible to hold off the attack on the royal palace and the king managed to escape. German psychological warfare came into play Leaflets were poured over the major Danish cities, warning that if they did not surrender, the cities would be razed to the ground by the mighty Luftwaffe bombers. The king, along with the Danish high command, was given an ultimatum to lay down arms and accept a peaceful surrender. Otherwise, the beautiful cities would be flattened by German bombers and artillery. Unable to resist a vastly superior enemy, the Danish government capitulated. It took less than a day of war for the German troops to march sovereignly into Denmark. Under the terms of the peace treaty, the Danish government was able to retain some autonomy by opting for a bloodless surrender. However, decisions would henceforth be overseen by the Germans. The long period of German territorial occupation, together with the abuses, increased the hatred against the invaders day by day. As a result, the Germans decided to take control of the country. They dissolved the local government and the Gestapo started persecuting the dissenters. Resistance cells sprang up all over the country, actively working to help the country's Jews who were suffering from German persecution. Towards the end of the war, the Danish economy collapsed. Famine spread across the country and many people lost their lives to starvation. The Danish people were only freed from the Nazi shackles in 1945. With this, they were able to rebuild their economy peacefully becoming one of Europe's countries with the highest per capita income.